victorious in the United Nations group. Okay, let's run If you were to be standing where I'm standing right now, you'd be no more than about 55 meters away from the Derby Bank. And whenever the name Derby is mentioned in sporting terms, it conjures up all sorts of different thought processes. If you're in the sport of show jumping, it means that this is the holy grail of show jumping. This is the one that everybody wants to win. The same applies as far as horse racing is concerned, whether it's the Kentucky Derby or the Epsom Derby. In soccer parlance, it could be a game between Kaiser Chiefs and Orlando Pirates, or between Man United and Man City. That's a Derby. So United Aviation took ownership of the Derby this time last year, and we are indeed very, very proud to have them back for 2022. This time with capacity crowds, the booking is completely and utterly sold out. But it definitely will be live streamed, and there will be opportunities for hospitality. So for those of you who are interested, we're going to take you down memory lane, and we're going to speak to Nicole Horwood, who didn't have the very best derby last year, but remember, she won it four times with Don Camarco. And there are grandstands over here that are named after great competitors. In front of me is Peter Gotts, which is grandstand F. Then E is Ronnie Lawrence. You go down to Gail Foxcroft. You go to Mickey Lowe. You go to Gonda Biedrichs and Barry Taylor. So who's going to be the next person after which they name a grandstand? My bet is it's probably going to be Nicole Horwood. I'm sure there's going to be a stand named after you with your illustrious record in this incredible event. I hope so. <laughs> One day. Um, I have won it four times. Uh, this year wasn't my year, but it was an amazing event. Uh, we had so much fun, all the riders. Um, the new sponsors, United Aviation Group, have gone all out. They really have um, you know, put everything into it. And, and even though we weren't allowed spectators at the sport, you know, they did so much to bring it into the homes of, uh, of the spectators and of the people. It's breathed new life into the sport. It's, it's just been an amazing event. Um, there's been so much entertainment. We've just had so much fun. And it's just brought the whole Derby atmosphere back to life. It's another win in the Derby for Ballydor. I would like to draw an analogy between what Bernard Cantor has done for the Investec Derby overseas, the Derby, and this the Derby with Jonathan Walpi, who's clearly passionate about his horses. He loves aviation. He's a good rider and a pilot. So really, Jonathan Walpi is the full Monty in terms of having a sponsor that is completely immersed in the sport. Absolutely, you know, and he really has chosen the right event to sponsor. The, the Derby is, is one of the best social events on the equestrian calendar. And not only does it attract um, equestrian, it, it attracts all, all socialites, all different from different walks of lives. It's just such a fun sport to watch and it's entertaining. And, you know, there's always an electric atmosphere. And so what he's done here is, is just been amazing for the sport. It's just, it's on another level. We haven't seen this kind of um, sponsorship in our sport. So we are extremely grateful. Um, it's so exciting. Um, I think there's bigger and better things to come with United Aviation Group um, and I'm also proud to be aligned with the, the group. Well, people might say Nicole Hood is a very lucky girl, but Gary Player always says the harder you practice, the luckier Absolutely. you get. And with Mark Whitenison, with Henning Pretorius and Capital, you sit. Uh, I think so. I'm so fortunate. I'm so lucky to be aligned with all those brands. Absolutely no conflict. And, and you know, we all want to reach or attain the same goal. And we're all working to, to better the sport. And 
you couldn't ask for better brands um, and, and capital stud a better a better stud with all, you know that kind of horsepower. So um, I think I think it's exciting times to come ahead. And finally, just a, a quick shout out to Lisa Williams and the inimitable one and only Campbell. Oh, she did an amazing job, you know, that, that partnership is just amazing. They went overseas, they flew the flag high, they've come back. Um, he's still going so well, uh, Campbell. Um, I don't think he's old yet, I think there's still big things to come for them. Um, and they just have an incredible partnership, they know each other so well. And a big congratulations to her. I think you're going to have to bring Don Kamaka out of retirement to take him on. <laughs> I think so. I, today I definitely wish that I was sitting on him, but um, I think I, I think he's done enough for the sport and, and he deserves his retirement at Summerhill. He's having a, in fact, I saw pictures of him the other day and he actually looked like he could jump around the derby. He looks so good. Nicole, who is your chief protagonist, could not possibly have spoken more highly about your advent to the sport, perhaps they can find out from you firsthand exactly what prompted you to get involved in this magnificent sport. Love my horses. I've been through lots of different experiences where I've had retired horses and nothing to ride. I've gone back into it. Recently started jumping again in the last 12 to 18 months. And really it's just a passion that I've always been involved with. Obviously there are many types of horse riding. One is hugely competitive as we saw on Saturday and throughout the week. But the other one is a kind of therapy for a man that's no doubt subjected to huge pressures in the aviation business. Do you find it therapeutic or are you still competitive? I personally enjoy my riding on the weekends and as I say I'm starting to get back into it. And we'll see how it goes. I've got some great horses and they're giving me the best chance to get back out there. Did you find the sponsorship and the infrastructure in place or did they come and find you? So again, it's um, something that just was an idea that I had one afternoon after way too many beers, as these things usually happen. We had pretty much finished with the project that I was um, luckily involved in at Summit Ridge, where I've got all my horses. We were having a discussion about will there be a derby this year, won't there be a derby this year. And Derby's always been something that's been ingrained in all of us as show jumpers and equestrians as one of the greatest events of the year. No matter which side of the arena you're on, whether you were in the VIP tent or whether you're on the stands, it's always a fantastic event. It's great excitement. It's a build up the entire year and something that we all love with all our hearts um, as much as we love our horses and our sport. And I said, well, I don't know what it entails, but um, I'm going to find out and we're going to have a derby this year, if it's at all possible. And fortunately, we ended up with the amazing event that we had this past weekend. Well, I think synergy is the key component of here because we all know it's a frightfully expensive sport. Unless you have a sponsor, it's almost impossible to get to the top with the cost of warm bloods and to a lesser extent people who produce thoroughbreds from scratch. But there is a huge amount of composite energy between horse riding, per se, and aviation. Absolutely. And um, again, the aviation and flying is, I think, a very, very similar thing in that regard. Because I think once you get bitten by the bug, it's very difficult to leave or to not be involved. And I think the same thing with the horses. And absolutely, as you say, both things are extremely expensive. Um, and it takes people with lots of passion and lots of love for it to make it work um, to such a level. From beginning to end, from the planning phases, from the positioning of the banners and the billboards and the attention to detail that was clearly prevalent, how do you feel about the delivery of 2021 Derby per se? I've got a marketing background myself um, and I've got a fantastic team in the form of Philippa from Purple Raindrop and Ingrid from um, Big City Life. I've worked with them for many, many, many years and uh, they're the core of my marketing team. But we work very closely together. And of course, lots of pressure, lots of energy and lots of hard work. But it ended up with an amazing event. It was completely by chance that I was standing there at the victory presentation when Lisa Williams was on the stage and I just thought to myself, having been enormously privileged to work for Investec for 10 years at the Derby at Epsom on those hallowed grounds, 
I felt this distinct similarity between what Bernard Cantor and his team did to that derby and what you could possibly do for this derby in time to come and indeed have done already so far. Well, it's a very kind comment um, and I appreciate everybody that's um, either personally called us or sent out many messages on social media to give gratitude for the work that my team has done um, alongside me and of course one always tries to when you represent yourself in public give the best that you possibly can both for the spectators for the participants and of course for our company which we're very proud of one can always improve nothing's perfect and i'm sure we'll think of better more interesting and greater ideas for the next year's derby we certainly do want to participate for the next several years to come and um, those discussions will start shortly although we have tentatively been locked in for three years at least and looking forward to what we can still do. So there's been a complete buy-in from the participants. Now the after party is something that indelibly brings the brand to mind and it was almost a dress rehearsal because of the limited numbers which are self-explanatory but was it nice for you guys to, to sort of be blooded in a way that didn't have this enormous pressure of two or three or five thousand people clamoring to get into the facility. To be honest, obviously the crowds do form part of the electric atmosphere. Yes. Um, although having said that, obviously for all of us that were able to be there, it was a very special derby because not too many people could participate. And that in its own right had its own unique atmosphere. I think that then led to the guys actually having a reason to be there as opposed to maybe just having a big party yeah. and that fortunately, um, willingly or not, who knows what our luck was, did not turn into a negative event and of course we hope that trend continues. Did it live up to the expectation that you had in your mind's eye prior to the inauguration of this year's derby? Most definitely. Um, I must be honest, obviously, until that first horse is in the arena on day one of the event and you see what um, the result is and you turn around and look around and you can breathe for a few seconds just before the chaos continues. Um, I was very, very proud of what everyone had done there to take it the level that we had. And um, as I say, we'll look for some new opportunities to make it even bigger and better. We're standing in front of some very, very famous grandstands and your name is behind here, along with Mickey Lowe and Gonda and some of the legends of the sport. And maybe today wasn't your day, but you've got horses that are coming through, that are young, that are competitive. My young horse Casino was absolutely fantastic. It's his first time in the derby. He jumped very green. But I mean, he just kept coming. Everything I asked him, he just said, OK, I can do this. And you know, his first 150 class was in June. So he hasn't been at this level for very long. And it was a huge ask. But I know that he trusts me and I know how brave he is. So I thought, you know what, it's a, it's a good first time. And I thought I'd just go in and see what happened. And I think he was brilliant. There's a lot of thoroughbred, particularly in JFK, approximately three quarters if you had to trace his lineage. Yes, so JFK is uh, three quarter thoroughbred. He was by a, um, a half Irish, half thoroughbred called Jambo, who the, the dam side of Jambo was full colour. And um, out of a thoroughbred mare by Trejo, who's a noble chieftain, I think. Um, and then the casino, the younger horse, he's a quarter thoroughbred. He goes back to boot camp um, on his dam side. I've jumped thoroughbreds my whole life um, until I started with the warm bloods. And a good thoroughbred is as good as any warm blood. Um, we've had fantastic, I had a fantastic thoroughbred called Bai and Bai, who won the derby three times. Um, and he was good as any horse here today. Yeah, I must admit, uh, during lockdown, Aidan Lithgow some, did some very insightful interviews. And the one that really moved me was a horse that I had watched as a kid, Toyota Charlie Swap. And if a 14-hand three horse can win the derby and jump six foot 11, then there's no limit, really. No, absolutely. You know what, the thoroughbreds are, thoroughbreds historically is in this country, jumping, have been our mainstay. Um, they're brave, they are, they've got the speed, they've definitely, the good ones have got the jump. Um, there's, there really is no difference. They're certainly a lot easier than the warm bloods in that they aren't as quirky, generally. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm really generalizing here, but as sure. a breed, the thoroughbred is such a good amateur horse. 
Um, and the good ones are very good professionals. I mean, you look at Mickey Lowe's horses. Um, they were outstanding, yeah, and yeah. appraised. Those horses would, yeah. as those horses would be competing here today, exactly the same as they did then. And I think uh, Wendy Grayson also had some superb thoroughbreds. Yeah, King Cole and King yeah. Canute. Canute yes. um, Gonda had Watchfire, Flaunt. Tony had um, Take a Chance. Annie had Jongleur with, that belonged to the Cliffords, and they were amazing thoroughbreds that had endless scope. But I think, uh, yeah, a good thoroughbred is just as good as a good warm blood. Well, I was chatting to Belinda Martin on my way to the show. She was off to some dressage show today, and she said that there's a big series that's going to start very soon, um, which is very exciting, particularly for thoroughbreds only. I've heard there is a thoroughbred series, but um, at our Young Horse Performance Series, we have one category, um, the trophy is for the best thoroughbred. So we have a four, five, six and seven year olds and there's a, a best thoroughbred category in that. So we've been doing that for the last 15 years. So um, he's definitely not gone and forgotten our thoroughbred. No, no, definitely not. And we've got some lovely young thoroughbreds coming up. But um, a lot of the professionals sort of go overseas and buy, buy warm bloods, ones that have started jumping already. Um, I think the thoroughbreds now have become the horse for the amateur purely because they're more affordable. Yeah, And let's just touch very briefly on United Aviation Group. I think probably the biggest shot in the arm that the Derby has had for many, many a year. Yes, you know, it's a fantastic sponsorship and Jonathan Wolpe has been absolutely wonderful. Um, he's put a lot of money into another venue very close by here called Summit Ridge and um, he's saved us with the Derby and what a fantastic sponsor to have. And he's a keen rider himself. And it's so nice to have someone who's got a real interest in the sport. And I'm, I'm hoping that he wants to carry on doing this because it was a fantastic day today. Dog, I thought this